Good day and thanks for making it Jamaica Magazine. We have a very informative show lined up just for you. First on our page is details on the revitalization of the dairy industry of Jamaica. Then we will look at some of the beaches that are being upgraded by the Ministry of Tourism. And later, a roundup of National Children's Day 2016. So don't go anywhere. Our show continues right after this break. Labor Day 2016. For health's sake, keep it clean. Join the cleanup efforts in your community on Labor Day and help to keep the mosquitoes away. Over 1 million people die each year from mosquito-borne diseases worldwide. So destroy all mosquitoes in the gullies, drains, and around your homes. Let's clean up our public spaces and beautify our environment. Register your projects now. Call 978-7654 or email laborday at mcges.gov.jm. Keep it clean. Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, May 18. The increase in special consumption tax, SCT, on petrol should not cause a high inflationary reaction in the economy. Acting Director of International Trade Relations in the Finance Ministry, Aeon Cruikshank, made that assertion while speaking on a GIS TV produced post budget debate discussion. He said that last year there was a similar increase of $7 on petrol, but inflation stood at approximately 3%. The increase in the SCT and fuel, right, um, it's on now a wider base, right? Um, it's an indirect tax, so therefore the base is, is, is relatively large, right? You get to capture uh, more of the informal economy. Yeah. The Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, says it's partnering with Jamaica and other countries to secure a sustainable supply of energy. Projects director at the CDB, Daniel Best, says a recent memorandum of understanding signed by the multilateral institution and the Inter-American Development Bank is a step in the right direction. He was speaking on Tuesday during the CDB's 46th annual meeting, now underway in Montego Bay. The MOU, which was signed earlier this month, seeks to increase energy security, reduce energy vulnerability, and promote renewable energy, energy efficiency, and low-carbon technologies in the region. The MOU allows our institutions to collaborate not just on national and regional projects to promote renewable energy, energy efficiency, and low-carbon technologies in the region, but also on a potential energy core financing facility for Caribbean sustainability. The idea is to work together to identify financing and investment opportunities for pilot and commercial scale projects, as well as to address legislative and regulatory, regulatory constraints to private investment. Deportees are to receive further support to reintegrate in society with the expansion of a program being conducted by the local government ministry and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. The Involuntary Returned Migrants Program provides social support such as counseling and workforce training as well as financial help. This is a program that we welcome and a program that we're going to be working closely with the organization with. The local government minister was speaking after a recent meeting with the UNDP. He said the Social Development Commission was to come on board to assist with the implementation of UNDP projects within rural communities. Minister Mackenzie also announced that the international body would be assisting with the upgrading of the Maypen Cemetery. I put it on the table and it got some traction um, about improving the Maypen Cemetery. It is an historical landmark not just in Jamaica, but in this part of the world. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says discussions are to begin with stakeholders to arrive at amicable solutions to the challenges within the health sector. Look out for us looking at how do we find ways to improve financing of certain services. And we're looking at a national health insurance scheme, for example. Dr. Tufton was addressing the recent launch of Nurses Week. 
He insisted that the move towards universal health coverage was an imperative, so the issues of financing the system had to be addressed. In other words, no Jamaican who is in a state that requires health care should be denied that care by virtue of not being able to afford it. And finally, all systems are set for Labor Day activities next Monday, May 23. Senior advisor to the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Lenford Salmon, made the disclosure at a JIS think tank on Tuesday. He also encouraged all Jamaicans to participate in cleanup activities as the nation seeks to stem the breeding of mosquitoes and the rise of mosquito-borne diseases. It's not a beach day, um, you, know, you know, or even if you plan to go to the beach, um, give us some hours of labor before you head off, head off to the beach. We really want to make that call, and particularly because of what the focus is this year. It affects all of us. Every single one of us is susceptible. So let us make our own contribution, put in our own effort to, to this cleanup campaign. This year's national project involves eradicating mosquito breeding sites in the Portmore communities of Gregory Park, Washington Mews, and Christian Penn. A free Labor Day concert to close off the day will be held at the Emancipation Park from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. This will also be broadcast live on a number of television stations. Persons can still register their Labor Day projects online at mcges.gov.jm or email laborday at mcges.gov.jm. You may also contact 978-7654, extension 5132. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Nutritious food. Succulent dishes. Superior workmanship and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Healthy children build a stronger nation. That's the theme for Child Month 2016. And one way of ensuring our children develop strong bones and teeth is by including dairy products such as cow's milk and cheese in their diet, where allowed, of course. Mommies and daddies, pretty soon you'll have more options from local stock. The dairy industry of Jamaica is being revitalized so that your children consume real milk. Hazelnut brown, white, spotted horns or not they produce that nutritious substance which makes strong bones and teeth there is a drive on to have jamaicans drinking more local cow's milk for the last few decades the consumption of jamaica's cow's milk has declined significantly the annual production of local milk has dropped from 600 farmers producing 38.8 million liters in 1992 to less than 200 farmers supplying approximately 12 million liters in 2015. At the same time, the consumption of milk and milk substitutes account for more than 60 million liters annually, 90% of it imported. At what point we were able to say, but I don't think it was really a glut. It was the importation of the cheap milk powder. I am more the milk powder doesn't have to be refrigerated. They were overlooking the nutritional value of cow's milk. The decline in local milk consumption has affected several areas, causing a high import bill and a decline in employment opportunities. I experienced them milk a whole cool and I'm talking about like 300 gallons of milk. And you have to just run it down the drain like that. And when you throw the milk, you still have to pay the workers, still have to pay electricity, still have to pay all your bills. Because you can't go to nobody or tell you have to throw the milk. It also affects the cows, as the decline in consumption causes fewer milking sessions, forcing the breasts to become painful from an excess of milk. Despite the perils of the industry, there are farmers who refuse to be cowed by the appeal of cheaper imports. 
Oral Wallace is one such farmer who has put his life on the line to stay in the dairy business. It was started in about 1969 by my father, Mr. Rupert Wallace, and my mom, Miss Panzi Wallace. They bring it up to about the year 2000 when I took over, for about 2002. The major challenge for dairy farmers and I think is Peter Larson. Because at night I can't sleep. I have to be up there. They make after me two times, I think about within about three months period. And they came with their guns. But I had to take over and afterward they were evaded. Milk industry. It's basically you have to be a lover of daring to be in it. Because the dairy industry is not an easy road. Gulping the white substance to the last sip will be a daily routine for every Jamaican if these entities have their way. Four companies have formed a partnership to revive the island's dairy industry under what's called the Drink Real Milk campaign. The government-owned Jamaica Dairy Development Board, CB Group through its subsidiary Nutrimix, Separate Limited with its Surge Island Dairies, and Newport for San Jamaica Limited have come together to increase the production and consumption of Jamaican milk over the next 10 years. The target is to produce 20 million litres annually. And the industry itself was really degenerating quite significantly. It's, it's a cause for, co for concern for everybody. The partners aim to overhaul the industry on two levels, production and consumption. The production strategy seeks to improve access to better genetic material, enhance animal health, and institute customized feeding programs and proper pasture management. The Jamaica Dairy Development Board has stepped in boldly to help in this area. The Dairy Sector Revitalization Project, flagship project or activity is, is the, um, the concessionary loan program, where we, farmers have difficulty in accessing loans at reasonable rates. So we have, we have instituted a program where we, we allow farmers um, funds, loans, through the Jamaica Dairy Development, um, um, the DBJ, Development Bank of Jamaica and its affiliates, um, where farmers can access loans at the rate of 5%, which is quite competitive. There's a 5 million threshold for the individual um, borrower. And for uh, corporate entities, it's 10 million. The Dairy Board has also committed more than $20 million to deal with Prairie Larceny in partnership with the Agriculture Ministry. On the consumption side, the campaign seeks to encourage purchasing of fresh locally produced milk to support the island's farmers, promoting the health benefits of drinking milk and sharing additional benefits of drinking cow's milk versus powdered milk. Over the past few years, milk has been a little bit quiet, and so everyone else, all the milk substitutes have been in your face and telling you, oh, you know, you should drink us instead. But the reality is, there is nothing like real milk. And what we're trying to get people to understand as well is, drink Jamaican real milk. Once you let the people aware of the nutritional values of it, it will go right back up. I was almost born on a farm, and from a barn, I've been drinking cow's milk. And do I look sick? Not at all. <laughs> Supporting the local milk industry provides jobs, increases the country's economic wealth, and nourishes our bodies. Persons interested in entering dairy farming may contact the Jamaica Dairy Development Board at 618-7107 or 927-1731-50. The government's tax relief will benefit more than 250,000 people who pay income tax. The tax threshold will be moved from $592,800 to $1 million on July 1, 2016 and to $1.5 million on April 1, 2017. The government of Jamaica, building a partnership for economic growth and prosperity. Hi, I'm Dorian. I am Dominic. And I'm Shimani. <laughs> this child month, hug your children. Make them feel good about themselves. And keep watching Jamaica magazines. 
National Children's Day was on Friday and the National Child Month Committee ensured that our children were reminded of how special they are. Here's a roundup of the event. I believe that children must be honored the way they honor us, mothers and fathers and mothers and fathers day. We want everybody to know that our children are the sunshine in our lives. You are my I think what Children Day does and the Child Month does is it brings our consciousness back to are we doing enough for our children. And this year, the National Child Month Committee ensured that Children's Day 2016 was better than last year's staging. This year is different because we have our main sponsor, the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. And uh, they have sponsored us and that has given us the privilege to extend the program. In former times we have had it just uptown and downtown or downtown alone. This is the fourth year and this year we're in six locations. We have other areas set up in Spanish Town, Halfway Tree, also in Black River in uh, St. Anne and in Montego Bay. We have been able to make it possible for the, um, Jamaica to show our children that they are truly our future. We say that all the time, but it's more than a mantra. It's something that we believe in, especially in our industry. We know that children are the source of renewal and ingenuity, and we know that we must support anything that promotes their development. This morning, we started the day in Halfway Tree and downtown Kingston, where with the National Child Month Committee, we went out to share tokens with our children and some stickers which had a simple message that reminded them that they are special. I'm really happy that today is our day. Um, I kind of find it really essential that the children can enjoy their day today. And yes, I got my sticker. I love it. I feel good, I feel appreciated and I feel that you really care about us. I feel nice because everybody knows that they are, they are all special. It's the positive feedback from the children that continues to propel the National Child Month Committee to make each year better than the one before. Next year we are looking for more sponsorship because it has to be in all 14 parishes. That is our plan. Are we doing enough to show appreciation to our children? What more can we do? I think it could be better. Um, I think we need to do more of this activity. Just don't wait until um, Child's Month. Each day of the year, a parent or a guardian should have something special being done for their child. If it's even to read them a bedtime story, because ultimately it resonates with them and tells them the importance of reading. And for all the children, it's very important that you talk to them, that you do homework with them. Be kind to them and be respectful to them and say thank you and please to them for what you ask them for. We know to different places showing us the country. Be there for our children, communicate as much as possible with them, um, allowing them to be part of the decision-making process, whatever we do, no matter how small it is. It simply could be you're going to purchase a shoes, but you select as parent the two quality shoes that you want and you have them select, so they're still part of that decision-making process. I'm really appealing to other persons outside to really see this as a very important event of the National Child Month Committee as all the other activities are but if they could just come on board and really help us on this special day to make the children feel loved remember next year national children's day should we be alive all adults must wear something yellow it says two things one you love your children and even to a greater extent you love all the children of jamaica let's make a concerted effort to acknowledge our children as the sunshine in our lives you are my Understand. Productivity is the way to go for all us Jamaicans. Small business, big business, small and young. We are tell every woman and man. We want growth and prosperity. We a better nation with a building plan. So we can build our product and sell our product and put more money in our hand. Our economy can rise to a level and build a better nation. Productivity to move forward on this land. Productivity, that's the way to go. We should understand. Productivity. 
Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Labor Day is just around the corner, and I'm sure many of us have lots of plans to clean up and beautify our environment. Some of us have even started our cleanup exercises already, and that's good. So, on Labor Day, if you just want to relax after a long day of work, we have some good news. The Ministry of Tourism has been upgrading a number of public beaches for your enjoyment. Talk about options. Sand. Sea. Sun. Taking a swim in the Caribbean Sea is a well-known joy for visitors to our fair isle, as it is for locals. So access to quality public beaches is being expanded so more locals can enjoy the natural attractions. There are few beaches around Jamaica with these amenities that are free for the general public. The Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, is implementing a project called the National Beach Development Program. The fund is spending $250 million to transform at least two beaches per parish into quality recreational spaces for residents and visitors. The effort is being supported by the Natural Resources Conservation Authority, NRCA. Each beach was assessed before renovation plans were drafted in conjunction with local authorities. The beach development program is also being implemented with the support of the Urban Development Corporation, Social Development Commission, and National Environment and Planning Agency. The upgraded facilities come with children's play areas, table eating and picnic areas, gazebos, restrooms, changing room facilities, parking, lifeguard towers, and utilities such as water and electricity. Entry will either be free or at a minimal cost, charged for the use of facilities such as bathrooms and concession areas. Two beaches have already been renovated and handed over to their respective parish councils. The Burwood Beach in Trelawney was upgraded at a value of $28 million. This beach, where the committee of retreat, hides and combat spend use on a regular basis and really and truly if you see on a public holiday, it is for the entire Jamaica. The famous Portland Beach was refurbished at a cost of $27.7 million. This is a place to be in this most beautiful parish. As residents enjoy these two facilities, contracts for the renovation of two other beaches have already been signed. One provides $30.5 million to upgrade the licensed beach in St. Thomas. The other earmarks $28.1 million for refurbishing the Marking Stone Beach in St. Mary. So by the summer of 2016, residents near License and Marking Stone should be able to make splashes as work at those beaches are scheduled to be completed by then. Other beaches identified for upgrading include Salem Beach in St. Anne, also known as the Runaway Bay Beach. In St. Elizabeth, the two beaches have been selected, Great Bay and Fort Charles. The Old Harbor Bay Beach in St. Catherine will also be refurbished. It's a popular spot for children and offers up a source of earning for dozens of residents. Over by the West End in Westmoreland, the Norman Manley Park Beach was selected for upgrading. Also on the agenda, the Jacob Taylor Beach in Trelawney, Orchard in Hanover, Dumpot Beach in St. James, and Lime Key in St. Andrew. The Ministry of Tourism, through the Tourism Enhancement Fund, ensuring that Jamaicans have access to the best public beaches equipped with world-class facilities. The father-child relationship is an important one, one that is often overlooked but essential to the child's holistic development. Dads, we'll show you one sure way to bond with your daughters. And don't box yourselves in. You can also try this with your sons. Take a look. Hi, I'm Zoe and I love to spend time with my dad. We do fun things like baking a cake for mommy.
can do fun things with air that took action. For years, I had uterine fibroids. In fact, my tummy went from supermodel flat to resembling that of a six-month pregnant woman. I took control though and got treated. National Fibroid Awareness Week is May 15 to 21. Host a lunch hour meetup at your office. Come to our public seminar on May 21. Visit our website, join us on Facebook. Get informed, take control, tell a friend. I say be careful what you teach your little children Make sure I know something to hurt them Mind what you say to my sister She could be the next Prime Minister Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect that your child has been sexually abused, or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counselor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred. If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused, we encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions and to seek guidance in terms of do I speak to the police about this, which we always say you have to because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter, and it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need, and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips, and of course, any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbor Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134, or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to me, sister. Cause she could be the next prime minister. This is where we close the pages of today's magazine, but another informative edition awaits you tomorrow. Don't forget to share your feedback and comments. Email us at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm, follow us on Twitter at JIS News, or visit our website, jis.gov.jm. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do remember to show your children that you love and appreciate them today. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.